We want you to plan for success. Welcome to Planning Matters Radio. Peter, it's good to see you. We are following some kind of breaking news this morning, Silicon Valley Bank and the markets. As we are recording this right now, it is early Monday morning. We want to let everybody know that, of course, there are a lot of moving parts and we're going to stay up to date on it. But here's the latest. We're, we're going to kind of dive in here, Peter. The Fed moved over the weekend to stem a U.S. banking crisis after the rapid collapse of Silicon Valley Bank, which was the 16th largest bank in the U.S. So let's start with what's most important. What do clients need to know? Well, clients need to know, A, that with any financial institution, their deposited accounts are kept separate and segregated from the financial institution's operating expense account. In other words, they're not paying for office supplies and payroll and, and operating expenses out of depositor or investor accounts. They are mm -hmm. separate and segregated for a reason. Now, with the actions that the Fed took over the weekend, they are really trying to prevent this from spreading and being contagious and creating larger panic. Because, you know, when one financial institution, in this case, the, the 16th largest bank, uh, does go insolvent or they have to take it over, now everybody questions whether their money in, in deposit in their bank is, is safe as well. And that kind of domino effect if people rush out can actually create a much larger issue than what may actually be there. And so they're trying to re reassure people that, hey, we're, we're going to help to make everybody in this particular institution whole. And they even extended that above FDIC insurance. Uh, but they're, they're more so trying to help create the sense of confidence that everybody with other banks and financial institutions doesn't rush out and withdraw all their money all at once because that could create a vacuum and, and a real problem. Mm -hmm. So you did just mention the FDIC, which insures bank deposits up to $250,000. In this instance, they're going to give back more than that. But what if I do have more than 250 k at my local bank, Peter? Yeah, per person, per institution. So let's be cautious here. Let's stay underneath those limits. And I know that, hey, some of the depositors at, at Silicon Valley Bank were like venture capitalists right. with millions and millions. But for most average savers, investors, you know, there's no reason to have more than $250,000 in one banking institution. If you've got more than that, A, spread it out across multiple institutions so that you can keep it underneath that insurance limit. But B, really that's a large amount of excess cash sitting on hand. And there are other options out there where you could be earning a much higher interest rate. Money in the bank is really in most cases, losing value to inflation over the course of one year or certainly over multiple years. And so that's not really the right place to keep that much cash. We want mm -hmm. three to six months worth of uh, living expenses for our emergency account. We want our checking account to cover operating costs for maybe a couple months, but I don't see much reason why we would need $250,000 in, in banking institutions. Right. Okay. So you, you said, you know, losing value. And one of the reasons that this was happening is that bonds have been losing value as the Fed continues to raise interest rates. So the Fed said essentially to any bank, if you have government bonds on your balance sheet and the value has fallen, we will take them at par and give you financing for it. What does that mean? So I, I give an analogy here. If, if, at the end of 2021, we had very low interest rates and you had a $500,000 home you wanted to put on the market and, and buyers came along and they could afford $2,000 a month as their mortgage payment, right? They could, at those lower interest rates, afford your $500,000 home. But as interest rates rose, they could still afford the same payment. And so they weren't looking at $500,000 homes any longer. They were looking at four hundred, three hundred and fifty thousand dollars dollars homes. And, and the same scenario works with bonds. When I go out and purchase a bond, if 
interest rates begin to climb and a new investor can go out and purchase bonds at higher interest rates, in order to make mine attractive, I have to lower the cost. And so what the Fed said was, hey, we realize that our actions of raising interest rates have caused bond values, existing bonds, to lower if you were to sell them out early, right? right. If, if, if you can't wait until maturity when you would get your money back with an actual physical bond and you need to create liquidity sooner, you are subject to potentially a loss of principal for doing so. And, and that's what they're talking about here is, hey, if you've got federally backed bonds, we'll buy them out at full par value and not create that loss of principal, which again is, is them stepping in and saying, hey, our policies have, have created this scenario and or at least uh, uh, contributed to it. And for what extent we can, we're going to back the financial uh, industry and the banking system so that we don't create insolvency or losses for banks uh, mm -hmm. so that they can give confidence and reassurance under under a time like this you know and 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 hopefully this is something that is is simply contained to a, a few banks here Silicon right. Valley is is the big headline but there's signature bank and uh, First Republic Bank. It's hard to keep a pulse on all of these, what are essentially regional or, or community banks all the time. But, you know, what the federal government is is doing here is trying to step in and, and provide confidence in the financial industry and the banking industry. So how does this then compare to the 2008 financial and banking crisis? Well, so back in 2008, and I wrote about this in my book, Understanding Your Investment Options, mm -hmm. but a lot of the financial industry was tied up in poorly underwritten mortgage-backed securities, which were then grouped together and, and sold off and leveraged multiple times. And so it really was kind of a house of cards and a domino and effect that now with the benefit of hindsight we can see didn't work out very well but there was there was multiple layers where a single kind of asset was leveraged across different financial institutions and when people who shouldn't have been uh, um, co-written and, and authorized to get a mortgage or get multiple mortgages in many cases that they couldn't afford stopped right. being able to make those payments. It really did have that domino effect where it cascaded across several different uh, institutions mm -hmm. with the mortgage-backed securities all being kind of rolled into one and then resold and leveraged and resold again. Mm -hmm. So yes, it, it was a very scary time in 2007, 2008 for good reason, because it really was kind of that domino effect. Whereas here, hopefully this is, you know, quite contained to maybe just one or, or less than a handful of banks and, and not the same kind of systemic problem that was created by gross negligence, lack of oversight and, and improper uh, issuing of, of large amounts of loaned capital. Right. So as we mentioned, still a lot going on as we record, but what are you watching for next then? Well, reaction from the market. You know, I, I think this is going to create certainly ripple effects. We will see mm -hmm. some volatility in the market due to this. Um, just making sure that this does not begin to build. And, and again, the federal government doing what they can to step in and, and hopefully prevent that from happening to do what they can to provide confidence and reassurance. But we're, you know, we're continuing to monitor it, Aaron, because it as, is good. As we are recording, I just got a, a notification trading in several regional bank stocks was halted amid contagion fears uh, over the fit failures of Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank. So. Yeah. So again, talking about two different things here, though, that is in the stock of the bank, mm -hmm. right? So stock owners are part owners of the company and I can invest some of my money in a company and my results are going to be based on that company's stability and profitability and, and longevity. But when I make a deposit with a bank, that is a very separate thing. That is not, 
intended to be a risky investment. I'm not taking ownership. I am providing uh, or, or taking advantage of the service that they provide for storage of funds in that case. And those are very separate things. My deposit at the bank versus buying bank stocks are, are very, very different transactions. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, I do expect that we see stock prices, particularly in banks uh, and, and in the financial sectors. I, I think that we see some fluctuation and some ripple here, but depositors who have accounts who are under FDIC insurance, insured levels really should, should just give a moment's pause and hesitation before panicking. Right. Don't panic. But if you are concerned, call Peter. So Peter, how do people get a hold of you with questions? Yeah. Welcome to give us a call. 919-300-5886. 919-300-5886. You can also visit online rashanplanning.com or email me peter at rashanplanning.com. It looks like richonplanning.com. All right. Peter, thank you. Thank you. This has been Planning Matters Radio. The content of this radio show is provided for informational purposes only and is not a solicitation or recommendation of any investment strategy. You are encouraged to seek investment, tax, or legal advice from an independent professional advisor. Any investments and or investment strategies mentioned involve risk, including the possible loss of principal. Advisory services offered through Brookstone Capital Management, a registered investment advisor. Fiduciary duty extends solely to investment advisory advice and does not extend to other activities such as insurance or broker-dealer services. Advisory clients are charged a quarterly fee for assets under management while insurance products pay a commission which may result in a conflict of interest regarding compensation.